Currently, when you're using JSON stringify to create a JSON string from an object, you lose all the type information. This means that when you use functions like JSON parse, you only get the any type. In this video, we will fix that. We will create a properly typed JSON stringify function declaration, which will store the type information from the object it was created from, so that you then get proper type information when you use functions like JSON parse. Let's get started. So before we start to implement a proper JSON stringify and JSON parse, let me show you the issue in code. We have here an object with a string, a number, also an undefined value. And we also have some special kind of objects like the one for the property D here, which has a to JSON function. Now we also have here an arrow function for the property E. So let's see what happens when we use JSON stringify on this object. So let's create a new variable here and we say JSON stringify and we pass our object. Now let's first see what kind of type we have. We can see this is just a simple string. Let's also see what's inside of this string. To show this, I use a plugin I've written called TypeScript Worksheet. This plugin allows you to see the result of your TypeScript or JavaScript code right inside your VS Code Editor. So I just save this here and I run my TypeScript Worksheet command. And we can see here we get the result right beside our code. And what we can see here is that it's not the same as our object because we can see that, for example, property C is missing, also property E is not available. And something else is different. When we check the property D here, we can see that we don't have this to JSON function, but we only have 42. This is because JSON stringify checks if an object has a to JSON function in it. And if it has, then it runs this to JSON function to then get the value which we get when we stringify it. But why is undefined and this arrow function not available? Because undefined is not available in JSON, so this will get stripped away. and also also by default, functions will also not get stringified. Now you can add some special handling to also stringify functions, but by default, this is not the case. Now, what is the issue we have here? Now, let's say we have a function and we want to say write JSON string. And this function just takes a string. So we have our string here and we say this is of type string. Now, the issue here is that we don't know if this string we pass in is really a JSON string. So if it's valid JSON. So this means that you would have to check it somehow to be sure that this really is a JSON string. Now, what's the other issue we have? Let's see what happens when we call JSON parse. So let's remove this here and we have our parsed variable here and we call JSON.parse on our string. Now, when we check what the type of this is, we can see that this is of type any because when we check JSON parse, this just takes a string and some optional arguments and it returns any because JSON parse has no way of knowing what kind of string we are passing in. So I can say, for example, parse.g. And even if g is not available as a property in our object, TypeScript cannot show us, hey, this is not available. So these are the main issues of JSON stringify that we lose this type information. So let's get started and fix this. So the first thing we will do is we will create a new type and we call this type stringified. And this will be a generic type. And this generic type I will call object type. What is the implementation? implementation for this. The implementation for this is a so-called branded type. I already did a video about branded types. You can find it in the info box and in the description below. But to give you a quick explanation what branded types are, they can be used to make your primitive types, for example, strings, numbers, or booleans, more restrictive and tell TypeScript what kind of primitive this is. For example, what kind of string we have. So you can make it much more restrictive than just a simple string. To achieve this, we say this stringified object type is a string. And now we use a branded type. We say this is an intersection type of a string and we also add an additional property to it. Now I call this here source and I say this is of type object type. You can call this here whatever you like. This isn't some special kind of property. You can name it whatever you like, but I like to call this source here. But let's now see how we can use this stringified type. Now, the first thing we will do is we will create an interface and we will create a JSON interface. By using this approach, we can add additional function declarations to this existing JSON interface, which already exists from TypeScript. Now, what do we add in there first? The first thing is we add a stringify function declaration in there, but we will make this also generic. So what we then say is what are the arguments we want to pass to this function? Now, the arguments we want to pass should be the same 
as the one from our JSON stringify here. So we can see we can pass a value, a replacer, and also a space here. So let's just copy these and put them in here. But now we need to change the arguments a little bit because this replacer function here, we cannot handle with our type because when we use this replacer, then these properties inside of this object get changed. So the stringified version will not be the same. So we have to tell TypeScript that our type implementation should only be used when the value for the replacer is null or undefined. This tells TypeScript as soon as there is something else in there, then we cannot use this kind of type declaration. For the value here, of course, we are not using any, but instead we use our T here because this will be this type we pass in. But now the important part is, what do we return here? And here is where it gets interesting. We return stringified of T. Now, why is this helpful? Because by using this, we tell TypeScript we have this generic argument here, and this is this object here we pass in. And then we will create a string from it. So the return type is just a normal string with the additional type information stored inside of this string. But how does this change this return type? Well, some of you maybe have already spotted it, but when we check here on line 14, we have now here a different type. So when we hover over this, we can see we now have a string here, which is of type stringified, and we have the type information of our object. But don't get this wrong. I can still use this as a normal string. So I can still use, for example, string.length, and I can use everything which is available on the string. This is just some additional type information for TypeScript. Of course, this source property will not be available in JavaScript, but it's only available for the TypeScript compiler to determine the type of the object where this string was created from. So we have seen now that we have this type information in our string, and this we now can use to create a properly typed parse function. So let's see the type definition of the parse function. We can see it takes a text and it takes this reviver function. So we will say we have our parse function and it also takes a generic argument t. Then we have our string we pass in, but this string now is of course not just a simple string, but it is a stringified of t. So we will see in a second why we have to use stringified t. But before we dive into that, let's also copy this definition from up here because we also want to enable this function declaration when we pass null or undefined for our replacer function here. Let's now talk about what is the return type because this is again the important part of our type declaration. And what we return here is really simple. We just return t. And now you can see something interesting happened. Maybe you have spotted it here on line 18, the type changed. This is no longer any, but if we hover over this, we can see now that we get the type of our object we stringified earlier. So this means we no longer have the type any, but we have the type which we stringified earlier in our code. We now have the possibility to say, for example, parse b and we can see that this b here is of type number so the type checker knows what type this property b was before stringifying it this also means that i cannot use a property which does not exist for example h you can see we get an error here because the typescript compiler knows that it's not possible that we have this property h in there because this parsed object comes from this stringified object we have up here so as you can see, with only two lines of code here, we now have created a properly typed JSON parse and JSON stringify function. Now we could think now that we are done, but we have some issues we still have to solve because let's see what happens when I call parsed.e. And let me show you what the result is when we call this. We can see we get back undefined. Why is this the case? As mentioned before, we can see here that E was not stringified because E is a function. So the issue we currently still have is that when we call JSON parse, that it takes the type of our input object here. And this of course still has this E property. But this is not how JSON stringify and JSON parse works. Because when we call stringify, this E property and also, for example, this C property were stripped away. So this means in this resulting type, we no longer have access to these kind of properties, which are, for example, undefined or which are a function. So what can we do to fix this? We can create a type which will strip away all these properties which contain values which cannot be stringified. So let's see how we can do this. So the first thing we do here is we create another type here. So let's remove this parsed E for a moment and we create a new type. Let's call this type JSONified value. And this is also a generic type. So we will check each type we pass in here if this is stringifiable. So what we first do is we will do a proper check for primitives. So we say if T extends and now we say if it's either a string or if it's a number or if it's null or if it's boolean. In this case, 
we just return t itself because we can stringify strings, numbers, null and boolean because null can be stringified, undefined cannot. So let's do additional checks. We say if t extends, and now it gets cool, we say if t extends an object which has a toJSON function in it, then we want to figure out what is the return type of this JSON function and use this. For example, here you can see when we call this d property, of course we don't have access to this toJSON function when we stringify and then parse it, because as we've seen before, this just will return 42. So we need to get the return type of this function here. Now we will use infer for this. I already did a video about this. You can find it in the info box and in the description below. But what we will do is we will say infer r and by using infer, we can store the type at this location in this variable r. So when this is the case, we just return r. Otherwise, we will check if this type is undefined or a function. So we say if t extends undefined or if t is a function which has any amount of arguments in there and returns anything. In this case, we return never because we don't want to have this property in this case. But otherwise, if t extends object, we want to recursively call this object again and check if the values in there are also valid. So what we do here is when t extends object, then we call JSONified object and this JSONified object does not exist yet, but we will implement this in a minute. So I will then pass in this T and otherwise, if this is also not the case, just return never. Now, what is this JSONified object we see here? Well, let's create this type. So we have a new type and we say JSONified object and we have this T we pass in. Now, what we will do in here is we will loop over all the properties of this type we pass in and we will check each key value pair and we'll figure out if the value is of type never. If it is is, then it will strip away the key. We will use mapped types for this. I also did a video about that. You can find it in the info box and in the description below. But what we will do here is we will create a mapped type and we will have a key which is in key of t. So we will loop over all the keys in our object we have here. And now we will remove all the keys whose value have the type never. So how do we do this? We say as here, and now we say JSONified value of our t key. So this means we access the value of this key here we have in our object. And we say if this extends never, we return never, otherwise we return the key. Now let's backtrack here a little bit. So we loop over all the keys and we check if the corresponding value for this key is extending never. If so, we return never. So this means we strip away the key, otherwise we return the key. Now, maybe you think this will work, right? But this does not work because you cannot check if never extends never. This will always be false. So that this will work, we can just wrap both of these things in an array. So we wrap this in array and we wrap this in array. And you have to do this because we only can compare the never type by using this array syntax. So now what we say is the value here, of course, is just a JSONified value of our T key here. So for the value, we don't have to do any kind of checks because everything is is already done in the key here. So the key will get stripped away as soon as the value is of type never. So let's now use this JSONified object. So let's scroll down here. So instead of returning this normal T here, we will wrap this in a JSONified object and now we change the return type from our parse. So let's now see what we get. So when we now try to call our parsed variable here and we try to access a property, we can see now it looks different because we now can only access A, B and D because C here and E are both stripped away because C is undefined and E is a function. And as you can see here, all the other information is still available. And also what's pretty cool, we can see here when we call this D, this does not have the toJSON function, but it just returns the type for 42. So when I access B here, we can see that this is of type number and is not of type object with this toJSON function in it. So we also could resolve this properly by using this infer here. So by this approach, what we now have achieved is we now have a properly typed stringify and we can also use it in our parsed function. But of course, this is not the only thing we achieved because what this now allows you to do is you can now have explicit string types for your stringified objects. For example, when you say you have a function and you say, for example, write person object, you can then say you have a string, which is a stringified version of a 
first name, which is a string, and the last name, which is a string. And this now makes sure that everything you pass in there has to be this special kind of string. So you cannot just say write person object here with an empty string here. But as you can see here, we get an error because string is not assignable to this source type we have here. If you're interested in a more in-depth talk about these branded types, as mentioned, check the video in the description. But this allows you to write your code that you know that when you call, for example, this write person object, that it only allows to take a properly typed stringified version of your object. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something useful today. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date for the newest TypeScript stuff. And also let me know in the comments what kind of topics you'd like to have covered in future videos. See you in the next one. Bye.